G'day Internet, welcome back to another video. Now, in the last one, I said that the uh, next video was going to be about the games on the Atari ST. Uh, I believe I said something like this. Uh, there is quite a few good looking games there to check out. And that will also be the subject of part three of this video series. Unfortunately, I've had a pretty crappy couple of weeks uh, and simply haven't gotten that far. But also in the last video, there was a couple of comments left regarding this guy right here, the Megafile 30. So I thought we would take this chance to take a closer look. So this here is the inside of the Megafile, but before we look at this, let's take a look at the actual drive. This is it here, it is a Seagate ST238R, which is a 30 megabyte RLL hard drive. Uh, but to look at it, you could easily swear that this is simply uh, an MFM hard drive, given the uh, two cables out the back, and the fact that it still has the black, the standard black plastic front on it, even though it's buried inside the megafile. The difference between MFM and RLL isn't actually that much. Physically, they're identical. Um, the only difference really is the firmware that's loaded on the control board. And the difference primarily between MFM and RLL is just that. It is the encoding that is used to read and write data to the physical drive. Now, MFM on this physical drive would only format to 20 megabytes. Now there's reasons before that, but the short version is, is MFM's only limited to 17 sectors, while RLL can do 26 or more sectors on the hard drive. The downside of that is that RLL is slower. So in this particular instance, um, to get more capacity out of the drive, Atari obviously decided to go with RLL. And here we have obviously the main logic board of the Megafile, and as it even says on there, hard disk controller, RLL with SSI 32D blah 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 C103168 Rev2, which I'm assuming is the Atari model number. Now I'm going to kind of tackle this board in two halves, over here and over here, and we're going to start on this side. The two main chips driving this side of the board are these two adapter chips here. This one here is a AIC010F, which is a programmable hard disk controller. Uh, this one here is its Playmate, uh, which is a 16-bit buffer um, that also has DMA control. Uh, and sitting just up here is a 16 kilobit SRAM chip uh, from Sharp. But the key to all of this is this chip here, which is that SSI chip that was mentioned on the writing. It's an SSI 32D 5321CP, and it is the RLL encoder. Remember I said that the main difference between MFM and RLL was simply the encoding? Well, that's the chip that does the encoding right there. Jumping across to this side of the board, we actually have two chips that I really was not expecting. Here we have an Intel 8085 8-bit microprocessor, and sitting right next to it is an Intel 8156, uh, which does some I.O. addressing and also gives the microprocessor two kilobits of uh, SRAM. So that's kind of interesting. And here is uh, the Atari ROM, which drives these two chips, as far as I'm aware. And it is simply registered as the Megafile OS ROM. So what's actually going on here? From what I can gather, this whole side of the board here is essentially a bog stock RLL hard drive controller. But the thing is, it then needs to talk to a bus of some description, and that being the ACSI bus up here in the corner, which is obviously the port that goes to the ST. If I'm reading this right, that whole translation between the MFM hard drive controller and the ACSI is being run by the Intel uh, microprocessor here 
and it is essentially software driven uh, by what is written to the Megafile OS ROM here. Uh, and then obviously this is providing the IO uh, and a little bit of SRAM uh, that sits actually between it uh, and the MFM hard drive. So all in all, I actually thought it was kind of interesting. So a couple of quick things before we wrap up. The later versions of the Megafile actually had a SCSI hard drive in it, would, which would actually make more sense. Uh, the ACSI interface on the ST is kind of sorta, but not really SCSI. It's, let's just say there's similarities between them. So I could only imagine that going from ACSI to SCSI is probably a lot less involved than coming from ACSI to RLL. The only other quick bit is that, and you may not be able to see it from there, but I have this 30 meg hard drive partitioned into two 15 meg drives. I really wanted to format it into uh, two 30 meg partitions, but it just wouldn't let me. Now, there is a bunch of different uh, utilities and hard drive drivers available for the ST. Uh, and as a quick side note, now this doesn't apply to the later machines like the STE and the Mega TT and stuff like that, but for the uh, original ST and STFM and these kind of machines, you need to boot up off a floppy disk and load some very specific boot sector drivers uh, on the Mega file so when the machine boots up, it's actually then able to boot from the hard drive. Um, doesn't apply. Anyway, that particular utility, I must have tried, I tried at least three versions of the official Atari one. Then I tried a demo of another one and then another commercial one, which I came across. Anyway, at the end of the day, the only version I was able to get to talk to this Megafile 30 was a really old version of the original Atari utility, version like 2.0 that I found somewhere. Um, and the best I could do with that is two 15 meg partitions, so there we are. Now, one very last, last thing. Uh, that whole bit where I explained the way the Intel microprocessor and the Adaptet chips and everything talk together, that is my best guess, right? If you know better on how this uh, goes together, please, by all means, stick it in the comments. I'd love to learn if I'm wrong. Uh, how this thing actually works. Because essentially it is trying to do some kind of translation between MFM or RLL and ACSI. But for now, that will pretty much do it. Uh, this was only a quick look at the Megafile, but I hope you found it interesting. Uh, if you did, click like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can now find me on Patreon, just like these wonderful people just here. But until then, I will see you in the next one. So just a couple of quick things before we wrap up. The Mega Drive, uh, Mega Drive, I keep saying Mega Drive. <laughs>